according to the headlines, the recession is over. Yeah! Go the North, recession! The North American economy, according to the experts, as a result of unprecedented government stimulus, is expanding. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that happy days are here again. Our federal government is proposing $1 billion in the EI enhancements. The NDP may allow the government to survive to ensure EI reform occurs. There's even talk of a federal national housing policy. And the inclusionary housing policy has passed second reading in the Ontario legislature. And you know what? The number of people receiving EI benefits is dropping. And the number of new recipients is also falling. So if everything's so great, why are we here? You scratch the surface of the headlines, and the story isn't so great. The talks of new car sales in the wake of the cash for cookers program in the U.S. could be echoed in Canada when the home renovation tax credit expires. In July, in Canada, with stimulus spending going full tilt, there was no growth. Stimulus cannot last forever. When stimulus is withdrawn, there may well be another economic collapse and a resumption of recessionary conditions. Time will tell. The decrease in people receiving EI benefits may be as a result of people running out of EI without finding employment. Experts predict that even if the economic recovery is for real, unemployment will continue to rise for several years. Most people who are losing their jobs are not even eligible for EI. I ask you, what is to happen to them? Many people have run out of EI and still have not found employment. What is to happen to them? Jenny Ahn from the Good Jobs for All Coalition will tell you later. And many young people facing 20.9% unemployment can no longer afford post-secondary education. Others are burdened by student loans and still are, are unable to find employment upon leaving school. What is to happen to them? Nora Loretto of the Canadian Federation of Students will tell you. For people who have run out of EI and are unable to find employment, there's always social assistance, right? Not really. To be eligible for welfare, people have to become destitute. To be eligible, you have to virtually sell everything you own. You have to have virtually no liquid assets. Welfare rates have been reduced by 55% in inflation-adjusted dollars since 1993. And folks, good luck. Good luck trying to live on a maximum of $572 for a single person. Folks in desperation are relying on the frontline agencies for survival. Credit counseling services report increased demand. Daily bread food bank visits are up over 17%. More families are living in shelters. More people and families are relying on food programs at drop-ins. Unfortunately, grants from governments and foundations are broadly lower. Donations and sponsorships are down dramatically. Fundraising events and campaign returns are down. So how are agencies surviving with increased demand, or with increased demand and decreased revenues? Bob Rose from the Homelessness Response Alliance will tell you. And finally, if you are a visible minority, a new Canadian or a member of the First Nations, the recession has been particularly difficult. But jobs that are available tend to go to people with Canadian experience. There are structural and personal prejudices that create barriers to employment for people of color. I'd like to ask that uh, the representative for Good Jobs for All please come and uh, take the microphone and tell us about uh, EI reform. Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Ahn and I'm with the Good Jobs for All Coalition and also with the Canadian Auto Workers Union. The Good Jobs for All Coalition
Coalition is a number of progressive organizations who are fighting to improve living and working conditions. And we know that this so-called recovery is in fact a jobless recovery. Who is recovery? We know that the unemployment insurance system has drastically reduced benefits. Benefits that we desperately need in this recession. In the last two recessions, the, the unemployment insurance is the most powerful economic stabilizer. EI, or unemployment insurance, prevents deeper and longer downturns and reduces the shock of job losses. We need unemployment insurance benefits now. We're here with Flaherty's office to tell him that we need EI reforms, not just some hokey pokey change because of an election, a possible election whim. We need serious EI reform. Last week, the Good Jobs for All Coalition met at Ryerson University, where we met with community, with students, with uh, unionized workers and non-unionized workers to take on the challenge to tell the Harper government and to Jim Flaherty that we are strengthened despite the massive job losses, despite the, the heart-wrenching stories of people who are not accessing and receiving benefits, trying to survive and put food on the table, that we are strengthened by one another and we vow to take on the fight to ensure that we get EI reform because we need it now more than ever, as many of you know. So the Good Jobs for All Coalition has been signing petitions, has been lobbying the government and lobbying our MPs, and we'll take it to the election if necessary to ensure that we get real EI reform. We know that the changes that Harper had announced on EI reform was just about an election, and it's temporary, and most of the workers cannot even access those changes. They say that more workers can benefit from these EI changes. Well, that's baloney. We know that there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of workers who are not able to get it. And they're saying, well, let's give EI benefits to those with long tenure, with long service. Well, those workers are not able to access it. So we're telling Harper and Jim Flaherty to stop telling lies. We know the truth. We know that less than half of the 1.6 million workers that are unemployed now cannot access EI, and that is a shame. Yeah. So we're telling the politicians, let's get serious about EI reform. And the Good Jobs for All Coalition is demanding that we have a standard 360 hours of qualifying hours, not in some regions, but in every single region. Why should one area differ from another area in Canada? They should have the same qualifying hours. We need to make sure that EI benefits are increased to 50 weeks for all workers in all parts of Canada, not just in certain parts of Canada. We're demanding that benefits get increased to a minimum of 60% of normal earnings in your best 12 weeks. Why not? Why not in our best 12 weeks? Why, why look at what's been happening and try to give us the least amount of benefits when we as workers have contributed to unemployment insurance? It's supposed to be there for a rainy day, the politicians say. There's a $57 million, billion dollar, sorry, $57 billion surplus in unemployment insurance, and it's supposed to be there for us when we need it. And we need it now more than ever, and the politicians have said they'll have those benefits available if it's raining. Well, I'll tell you right now, it is pouring rain, and we need those EI reforms now. So Jim Florida